Hey, my name is Damon West. I'm a motivational speaker and author. I got a phone call last summer, the summer of 2018, from John Gordon. And, you know, everybody on the speaker circuit knows who John Gordon is, but not everybody knows who Damon West is. So when I answer the phone and it's John, John says, hey, this is John Gordon. I was like, John Gordon, how do you even know who I am? He said, Dabo Swinney can't quit talking about you in that coffee bean store. Uh, I got to tell you, I've uh, been at Clemson 15 years and uh, we just had a guy speak to the team tonight by the name of Damon West and just easily one of the top most powerful uh, messages that I've ever heard. He said, Damon, I want to write a book and I want to call it The Coffee Bean and I want you to write it with me. He said, are you in? I said, yeah, John, I'm in. But before I get to The Coffee Bean, let me back up and tell you some of my backstory. Let's start this story off. We'll start off 11 years ago, July 30th, 2008. I'm sitting around this little rundown apartment in Dallas, Texas, and I'm sitting on this couch. And I've got my meth dealer, this guy named Tex, sitting next to me. And at this point in my life, I'm a full-blown meth addict. And I'm sitting there smoking meth with this guy, passing the pipe back and forth, and I'm telling Tex, Tex, I think the end is near, man. I think the cops are gonna come get me pretty soon. You see, about 10 days before this, this guy that I've been committed a bunch of burglaries within the Dallas area have been picked up by the Dallas Police Department. So they're putting the screws to this guy. I know it's just a matter of time before they come get to me. And just as I pass the pipe back to Tex, I hear a window shatter off to my right. Tumbling across my living room floor, it's this canister going end over end. And, and it starts to register what's going on in my mind. It's like a slow motion reel. And as I get up off the couch and I get up and I look at this thing, and bam! Flashman grenade goes off in my face. A bright white light, loud noise, blows me back on the couch. And when I came to, when I could see it here again, this cop in full SWAT riot gear, man, he has a boot on my chest and the barrel of a machine gun is digging into my eye socket. And he's screaming at me, don't move, don't move. Man, I looked up at this guy and I blinked. I was like, man, don't worry, don't worry. And the cops started flooding in my apartment and one of them screamed out, we got it. We got the Uptown Burglar. You see, about a dozen other meth addicts and myself, young and old, male and female, black and white, and everything in between, indiscriminately and without reservation broken into the homes of dozens of people in the uptown neighborhood of Dallas to feed our insatiable meth habits. But on July 30th, 2008, the uptown burglars came to an end. They had their man. Another arrest is made in connection with a string of burglaries in the uptown neighborhood of Dallas. Investigators today announced the arrest of Damon West. So they took me into Dallas County Jail and they processed me in and I go in there and I sit around and I wait for 10 months to go to trial. And, and at the end of my 10 months, I get my day in court. Actually, I get my six days in court. At the end of six days, a jury of my peers was gone for 10 minutes deliberating my sentence. But if a jury's gone for 10 minutes and you're sitting at the defense table, they smoked you. And so when the judge came back in, he gaveled it in. Bam, bam, bam. Damon Joseph West, you are hereby sentenced to 65 years in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. And I just remember hearing my mother gasp on the front row. You know, the sound only a mother can make when she hears her son get a life sentence in prison. 65 years is a life sentence, y'all. And that's, that's the maximum that you can get. That to me was my rock bottom moment. It was at that point in my life that I knew that something had to change and that something was me. Where they took me out of the courtroom in handcuffs and shoved me out of there, put me in this little room on the side of the courtroom. Five minutes later, my parents came in. They're gonna give them one last visit with me before I go to prison. And my dad can't talk. He's in stunned disbelief. You know, he just saw his son that had all this promise in life. I played college football and I played quarterback at the University of North Texas in the 90s. Damon West is the starting quarterback. I went on to work in the United States Congress. I worked for a guy running for president of the United States. I worked for one of the biggest Wall Street banks in the world, UBS, to train to be a stockbroker. And he just saw that guy with all that promise get a life sentence for a bunch of property crimes around meth. So my mom did all the talking. And she told me a very valuable lesson. She said, debts in life demand to be paid, Damon West. And you just got hit with one hell of a bill from the state of Texas. She said, but you did the things they said you did at that trial. So you gotta go pay that debt to society. She said, but you owe your father and I a debt too. She said, we gave you all the love and opportunity and support to be anything you wanted to be in this life. And this is what you chose. This is the path you went down. The debt you owe to us. When you go to prison with that life sentence, you're gonna get on God's back like I told you to. Let God carry you through that. She said, but more importantly, you're gonna get in there and you're not gonna get in one of these white hate groups, one of these Aryan Brotherhood type gangs because you're scared because you're a minority in there. She said, I don't think so. She said, matter of fact, you're not getting any tattoos while you're in there. She said, no gangs and no tattoos. She said, you come back as the man we raised or don't you come back at all. She said, do you understand this debt you're gonna pay? And, and I told my mom, if it tears, it's like, yeah, mom, I understand. 
But I had no idea what I just promised my mother. I went around asking all these guys that had been to, been to prison before, how am I going to survive this? And everybody's telling me, every man, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, is telling me about the, the racial factor in prison. It said, you're going to have to get to a gang. But there was this one guy in prison, this old black guy named Jackson. I called him Mr. Jackson out of respect. Mr. Jackson was in his 60s. He'd been to prison four or five times. And he pulled me aside. And Mr. Jackson was always positive. He'd come up and, and talk to me about positive stuff every day, keep my spirits up. I got to tell you what prison's going to be like, but let's use an analogy. He said, imagine prison's like a pot of boiling water. He said, anything we put in that pot of boiling water is going to be changed by the heat and the pressure inside that pot. He said, I'm going to put three things in that pot of boiling water, West: A carrot, an egg, and a coffee bean. He said, first things first, West. If I put a carrot into a pot of boiling water and boil it, what happens when you boil that carrot? I said, it turns soft, Mr. Jackson. He said, that's right. He said, the carrot goes into prison. He's hard, but prison breaks that carrot down, turns him soft. He said, the carrot got beat. He got robbed, he may have got raped, and he may have got killed. He said, you do not want to be the carrot. He said, now let's put that egg in that pot of boiling water we call prison and watch how it changes. What happens to the egg, Wes? I said, well, it turns hard, like a hard-boiled egg. He said, that's right. He said, the egg went in the hard outer shell that protected it, and that soft liquid inside. He said, prison changed that egg, too, turned it hard on the inside. He said, that egg is hard, it got his heart hardened. He said, that egg is incapable of giving and receiving love. If you become that egg, stay in prison because you'll keep going back the rest of your life because you're institutionalized. He said, but Wes, if I put a coffee bean into that pot of warm water and boil it, he said, what happens when you boil a coffee bean? And I had no clue. And Mr. Jackson told me, now you've got to change the name of the water to coffee. He said, the coffee bean, the smallest of these three things had the power to change the entire atmosphere inside that pot. He said, small like you, Wes. He said, if you were going to survive prison and come back, and keep that promise to your parents to come back as the man they raised, you're going to have to like that coffee bean. He said, everybody in life puts that energy, negative or positive. And whatever kind of energy you put out, you get back. He said, so Wes, if you walk around with a frown on your face all the time, you're going to attract that same kind of negative energy. He said, but Wes, if you walk around with a smile on your face and you let those dudes know they're not getting to you, he said, you will change that prison from the inside out. He said, but the best part about it is the other coffee beans in prison, they will find you because of your energy. He said, go be that coffee bean west. And with that, I was off. I was off to prison. I got sent to the Mark Stiles unit in Beaumont, Texas, which was kind of a mixed bag for me, you know, because I'm from Port Arthur, Texas, which is the town right next to it. And so I go to prison, and here's where the story about the coffee bean comes into play. I take that story of Mr. Jackson's with me along the way to prison, and it's like a secret that I've got that I know everything's going to be okay because I was in county jail and I experienced the coffee bean thing myself because I looked around and thought about how did I even meet Mr. Jackson and, and I thought he met me because of my energy. So when I get to prison, I start applying the rules of being a coffee bean. Coffee bean life lesson number one is one of the most important. You have to get up every day and you have to work out. And I'm not talking about working out on your body. That's one of the areas. You have to work out in three areas every single day. Spiritually, mentally, and physically. You have to get in shape and stay in shape. And when I'm talking about this, I'm saying what you, you are what you eat. And that's not just talking about food. You are what you eat means what are you feeding yourself mentally, man? What kind of books are you reading? What kind of videos are you watching? What kind of websites do you go to? What do you feed yourself mentally? Spiritually, what do you feed yourself? Do you tap into something spiritually every, every day, every week, every month, every year? If you don't, it's a big universe, you should consider it. And physically, what are you feeding yourself and what are you doing to stay in shape physically? Spiritually, mentally, and physically, stay in shape every single day. Coffee Bean Life Lesson number two, the secret to life. Funny how sometimes you learn some big, biggest lessons in your life in some of the, the oddest places. And I would say a maximum security prison in Texas is a weird place to learn what the secret to life is, but that's where I learned what the secret to life was. And so let me just share with you without any more anticipation what the secret to life is. The secret to life is one sentence and it's real simple. The secret to life is serving others and being humble. It's in two words, servant leadership. Servant leadership is helping other people achieve their goals in life, helping raise other people up to a different station of life. Because man, when you are helping someone else, when you are helping someone else achieve their goals in life, you're helping yourself. And that's the way the universe works. Coffee Bean Life Lesson number three. The four things that you control in this life. I learned this lesson in prison and, and the sooner you learn this lesson, the easier your life will become the more manageable your life will become. 
There are four things that you control in this life, and they're the same four things that I control in my life too. Same four things everybody controls. Those things are what you think, what you say, what you feel, and most importantly, because everybody's gonna see this, what you do. What you think, what you say, what you feel, what you do. Outside of that, you don't control what's going on. The things you control are between your ears, they're in your mind. Coffee Bean Life Lesson number four. Your past does not define you. If my past defined me, you wouldn't be watching me in this seminar right now. There's no way that a guy that walked out of a maximum security prison three years ago would be on your screen right now today. Your past does not define you. Your past wins don't define you. Losses don't define you. Your past is your lesson. The present today, man, that's a gift. That's a gift you got to get up today and make something happen. The future is your motivation. You know, your future goals, your future plans, your future goals to be a better servant leader one day, to be better husbands, better, better wives, better fathers, better mothers one day. That's what your motivation is every single day. The past is your lesson, the present is a gift, and the future is your motivation. And the final Coffee Bean Life lesson, one of the most important there is. You see, energy is a lot of times about your body language. And your body language is what people are going to see before you even open your mouth, before anything is ever spoken. So your body language says a lot. The power to create positive energy in every room that you walk in starts with the way you look. What I'm saying is the Coffee Bean Life Lesson number five is it all starts with a smile. It's impossible to be negative when you're smiling everywhere. And when you're smiling, just like I walked through that prison, I had a smile on my face like Mr. Jackson told me I had to have, you will attract the other positive energy in the room and you will be a coffee bean. So after seven years, three months, serving time in that maximum security prison in Texas, parole decided to let me go. They let me walk out on a life sentence of parole. I'm on parole until 2073. But I don't care about that because I go around all over the country sharing my story with college football programs, with high schools, with junior highs, church groups, and corporations, and, and sharing my story. It, it, part of it is a warning about the dangers of drugs and the consequences of bad decisions, but the, the other part of it, the big part of it, is about that coffee bean message, that message of hope, that message that anybody can be the change agent. You know, I want to conclude this by saying how grateful I am to be here today, and it's, it's a blessing in my life to be in the position I'm in only a little over three years out of prison, but it's proof that your past does not define you. Don't ever let anybody tell you what you can, what you cannot do. You are the only person that can hold you back in life. And the most beautiful thing is to wake up every morning and look in that mirror and talk to the only person that can hold you back. Look in that mirror and say this simple sentence. It's 10 words and 20 letters, the most powerful sentence in the English language. If it is to be, it is up to me. And that is a permission statement, and it's worth repeating. If it is to be, it is up to me. All good presentations have a call to action, and my call to action is this. It's the same call to action that Mr. Jackson gave me before I went to prison when I left from county jail. Go out there and go be that coffee bean. Y'all, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me today.